is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I think it's uh, pretty sad that we even have to uh, offer this bill and that I have to offer this amendment. But I think uh, the American populace and public realize, realizes and is completely outraged with what's going on in this country, how they don't feel like they have a voice anymore, how they don't feel like they're being recognized, their rights to be parents and have authority over their, over their own children. And it's also very disgusting, quite frankly, what's been going on in our kids' schools and parents across this country, this country, Democrats, Republicans, independents, all of us are furious with what's going on at these schools and that's why we even have to do this. So my amendment um, adds a private right of action for parents to hold schools accountable for not honoring the right set forth in Title I and Title II of this bill. It seeks to strengthen enforcement mechanisms within the Parents' Bill of Rights. My amendment, if passed, would ensure parents can sue if school districts force teachers or students to accommodate critical race theory curriculum, compel students to observe obscene or sexual material without parental consent, use pronoun changes without parental consent, violate student privacy without par parental consent, or neglect to report sexual assault or harassment on school property. The bill, as it's currently written, puts the protection of parental rights in the hands of the Department of Education bureaucrats. It is not enough for Congress to leave enforcement of Department of Education bureaucrats or wait for the corrupt Department of Justice to, to file a lawsuit on parents' behalf. I don't trust the Biden administration to go after woke school administrators that force dangerous ideologies on innocent children. Parents should have the opportunity to sue these schools. For far too long, the public school system has undermined parental involvement in education decisions. If we want to truly empower parents' rights, we should give parents the tools to enforce those rights through this amendment, not leave it in the hands of bureaucrats. Madam Speaker, at this time, I would like to yield one minute to the gentleman, Bob Good from Virginia. Excuse me, two minutes. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I support passage of the underlying bill, but I also rise in support of this amendment, which I think would truly empower parents. Adding a private right of action places the ultimate protection of parental rights back where it belongs in the hands of parents, not Department of Education bureaucrats. For too long, the public school system has undermined parental involvement in education decisions, and parents have been helpless to hold them accountable. The union-driven COVID policies in our schools served as a wake-up call for many parents, and school boards across the country have tried to stop them from raising their voices in protest. A private right of action would make a meaningful change to the balance of power so parents can rightfully have a say in what their children are being taught. This amendment wouldn't unleash lawsuits against schools. The private right of action could only be used if the school is not forthcoming with the common sense provisions of this bill. If the school shares curriculum, teaching materials, and their budget openly, then there's no problem. If the school notifies parents about actions from a school administrator to change a child's pronouns, then there's no standing under this bill. There's also a limit that the private right of action must be filed within 30 days of the violation. Parental rights precede government. Our government was created to protect our God-given rights. When government is working to subvert those rights, it's the right of the people to put new guardrails in place to secure our precious liberty. Guaranteeing a private right of action will ensure public schools are held accountable to the important tenets of this bill, and I urge support for the amendment, and I yield back. The gentleman yields. The gentleman from Arizona is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields. For what purpose does the gentleman from Virginia seek recognition? Uh, Madam Chair, I rise in opposition to the amendment. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Um, Madam Chair, I I just think the amendment speaks for itself. Uh, it, if um, 100 p parents show up at a school board meeting and each demand to be heard for as long as they want to speak, um, this bill would give them a private right of action in federal court to enforce their right to speak to the school board. Now, 
my local school board limits people to three minutes. I think that's a reasonable limitation. But in, um, when the amendment to allow reasonable limitations was defeated, you have the bill that they have, everybody has a right, each and every one of the 100 people that show up, no matter how repetitive or how irrelevant irre irre um, it may be, um, I, I just think um, people need to know what's in the amendment and can judge it for themselves. People have said that some um, uh, parents have been arrested by the police uh, for showing up at the school board. And let me tell you, that can only happen if the police believe that a crime is being committed. Um, I yield back. And yields. The question is 